is this. And in our Sunday services, we have been treating the subjects, engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. Engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. We are looking at part two of that teaching. And specifically in this service, we are looking at part 2B. Engaging biblical wisdom for all round breakthroughs. All round, all round. I'd like you to take note what God intends for every one of us is all round breakthrough. Not to suffer on every side. But that every area of our life be complete. Every area of our life be testimonies. Last Sunday, we looked at the biblical wisdom for successful parenting. How to use God's principles, making our children great. Because that is what God has for them. I and the children God has given unto me, therefore, signs and wonders. Not for shame. We look through the scriptural wisdom on how to do that. And this Sunday, we are looking at our businesses. Our businesses. And very specific in this teaching, we are looking at biblical wisdom for, for business breakthrough. Biblical wisdom for business breakthroughs. Biblical wisdom for business breakthrough. Let me begin to say, God's people, that every redeem is saved to shine and not to suffer frustration. God has called us to reign. He has called us as kings and priests to do what? To reign on the earth. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. To reign, not to be enslaved. To reign in every area of our life. To reign. God is therefore against any kind of stagnation in our lives. He has promised us a life of profit, not a life of defeat, not a life of losses, a life of profit, a life of profit. In Proverbs chapter, four, uh, Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17, Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17, he said, that thus says the Lord thy redeemer, the only one of Israel. I'm the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. He teaches us and he leads us. What a good God. To profit, because our God Himself is a God of profit. God is not a God of losses. God will not want us to have fruitless labor. No, in Isaiah chapter 60, he says, You shall build and inhabit, you shall plant and you shall eat. You shall not labor in vain. That's what he said. In Isaiah chapter 61, he says, you shall build and inhabit. So God wants us to build and inhabit. He said, you shall not plant for another one to eat, nor for a build for another one to inhabit. As the days of my elect, so shall your breakthroughs be. Praise the name of the Lord. So with God, you are to enjoy the fruit of your labor. You cannot be laboring. I have nothing to show. No, that cannot be God. That cannot be God. The same way for every business, what God has promised us is a life of profit. That's why he said, I will teach you. I am the Lord, your, your Redeemer. I will teach you. And I will not only teach you, I will lead you. So that you will make profit in life. Praise the name of the Lord. I will lead you. I will teach you. So that you can make profit in life. So with God. We are sure to enjoy profit. It is the ways of God that guarantees profiting. Not the ways of man. The ways of God. That's what guarantees profit. God will not lead you to losses. No, but to gains. Hallelujah. It is time for God's blessings to become real and visible in our lives. The time of hiding is over. Your business will not be in the hiding anymore. That amen is not strong enough. That amen is not strong enough. In Isaiah chapter 54, see what God intends for you. 
And verses 1 to 4. Isaiah 54. And verses 1 to 4. Sing, go by. Thou that is not there, break forth into singing. Cry aloud. Thou that is not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wives. Says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tents. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spear not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stake. Somebody is about to enlarge in that business. If it looks as if you are the one, shout it louder. Amen. He said, get set. For you shall break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. And make the desolate city to be inhabited. Listen to me. Some people are in this service. Before, between now and the middle of this year, God will give you an international open door. If you believe it, your amen will be louder than that. Some people are here. That shop that you are running, be, before this year is ended, you will open another branch in the name of Jesus. Whatever you believe, you will shout a louder amen to it. Hallelujah. As these words are going forward, you better take it. It's a prophetic service. The hallmark of this service is for breakthrough in your business. Breakthrough in your business. Breakthrough in your business. Breakthrough in your business. That business you are doing now, you are complaining, oh, there's no, com there's no customer, there's no customer, there's no customer. Before the end of this year, your problem will be how to meet up with the demands. Oh, I thought somebody is shouting a better amen. If you are the one giving me loudest amen. Hallelujah. It's time for God to distinguish you. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, you are the light. You are the light. He wants to set you on a hill where no one can pretend not to see you. For you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. That business that looks like in the corner, it is coming to a lamb light. In the name of Jesus, do not despise that thing in your hand. Don't despise that thing in your hand. Because God is making it great. God is blowing up that business. It's only for us to understand the principles of God. That's what guarantees breakthroughs. The principles of God. The principles of God. So we're talking about business breakthrough. What is business? What is business? You can't be talking about business without mentioning profit. Because that's the hallmark of business. Business can be defined, therefore, as any activity or endeavor we engage in for the purpose of profiting. For the purpose of profiting. Psalm 1 and verse 3. Whatsoever you do it, it shall prosper. Whatsoever you do it, as long as it's righteous, it shall prosper. Whatsoever you do it, shall prosper. Whatsoever you do it, shall prosper. So there is greatness in that thing in your head. You can be selling water and prosper. You can be selling granite and prosper. You can be selling chin chin and prosper. Hallelujah. Prosper. Many years ago, in our church in Kaduna, those days, a woman shared the testimony. How that God just gave her, in a business meeting like this, God's servant Bishop Edipo was preaching. And was mentioning you say there is, you have nothing to do. What is that thing in your house? Go sell it and begin a business. So, she sold the small TV that was there and started frying akara, beans cake. Bought some, what was it? Pot, frying pot and all that. And started frying. And before you know what is happening, she started by frying akara. After some time, she joined plantain. After some time, yam. And she kept expanding. Expanding. And after some time, 
she put a small shade there and got a fridge, put it there, started selling soft drink. So people started rushing. You come, you order, you make your order, depending on the combination. If it is the three, they put akara, yam, and plantain. You go there, you sit at the shed there, you buy soft drink, and then wedge it there. And then she started expanding. People started rushing. And before you knew what was happening, the same thing, she reproduced it three streets after that. And then before you knew what was happening, it became four areas. She now had a, a building. She now had a boot, you know, like a restaurant. And that's all she was doing. Before you knew what was happening, after some time, she opened a supermarket. And after some time, she had a boss. Just from that little beginning. Praise the Lord. Wake up! All this big, 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 big proposal you are, you are writing with pictures and you know everything. And five years have passed. Nothing, only English. Praise the name of the Lord. Wake up. I'm praying that in this service, God will drop a divine idea to you that will bring you to lamplight in the name of Jesus. Business is in any activity that we're engaging for the purpose of profiting. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 23. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the leaves tended only to penury. Talk, 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 talk. Some people have big, 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 big things. They keep talking, they keep talking. To take a step is a problem. They keep talking, 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 talking. Talk. They have about four complementary cards. CEO, CEO, CEO of nothing. Just distributing it, distributing nothing. Five years have passed. Seven years have passed. When are you starting? The talk of the town turns to penury, turns to poverty. Put your hands to work and let God prosper. What God prospers is what you put your hands to do. Whatsoever he doeth, Psalm 1 and verse 3, whatever he doeth, that's what will prosper. Not whatever he's talking. Not whatever dreams he's sharing all the time. By the dreams I have, I mean, in the next three, in the next two years, we will be importing crude oil to Saudi Arabia, to Atlanta to the to this to this. I mean, we just be, you know, at least in a day we'll be we'll be exporting about 500 barrels and then calculating that that should give minimum of two million dollars per three weeks English. Rise up and put your hands to work. It is what you do that God prosper. Not the drawings on the paper. It's good. But that's not good enough. Praise the name of the Lord. Biblical wisdom is what guarantees breakthroughs in business. You want to prosper and prosper righteously. Trade covenant secrets. Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 to 25. The wisdom of God is knowing the ways of God and doing it. Knowing the ways of God, locating his ways, and plugging into it. That's what brings your blessing. James 1, 22 to 23, 22 to 25. This is the man that will be blessed. The one who locates his ways and actualizes his ways. That's the man that will be blessed, not the one that is talking. And from scriptures, we know God's ways are highways that leads to high places in life. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9. My ways are different from your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. Neither are your ways my ways. For as heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
My ways are higher. God's ways are higher. God's principles are higher to men's principles. Not the wisdom of God, of the world. The wisdom of God, divine wisdom, is what guarantees great profiting in business. Thank God for your big business dream. God is not against it. As long as you are ready to pay the price. As long as you are ready to, to, you know, to adhere to the keys, the wisdom principle. Why not? It shall come to pass. God wants us to think big. But he wants us to apply his principles to get to where we are going. Praise the name of the Lord. So covenant businesses trade on covenant secrets for exploits. And that's what we are looking this morning. Hallelujah. And we must understand, essentially, business is meeting needs. You want to make exploits in that business. Be sure that you are committed to meeting needs. Meeting needs. Be committed to meeting needs. Whatever business you are in is to meet a particular need. If you are a caterer, you are meeting the needs, the hunger needs of people. If you are into dry cleaning, you are meeting this sanitation need of the people. If you are a service provider, you are meeting their needs in that area. So, have that as your major goal. Because when you meet the needs of people, well, they will always patronize you. That's why you can see you may have a saloon. Somebody is living at maybe you are living at uh, somebody and then there is you know, a saloon just next to your house. But they can't, they can't do what you want. Your own saloon is way back there in, uh, in uh, Uborikuko. So you live where you are living. Take transport, two transports, and go there. And people are plenty there. You will wait. Just because you know that place, they will always give you what you want. So that's how it is when you are in business. Let your priority be meeting needs. In a place where there is no customer for some people, some people have, their major problem is how to, 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 to attend to all their customers. That's why you find some mechanic workshop. Some other one is staying there from morning to night, sleeping, waking up. And another person is there from morning. People are there. Cars are there. Everybody wants them. Don't, 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 don't. I'll wait. You check the car for me by yourself. Oh God, I have so plenty of work on my hand, no problem. So when should I come? Come in three hours. He will go and come back again. I'm still busy. Can you wait for 30 minutes? I will wait. Because he's sure when that person touches his car, it's done. So you are in business. Please go to meet the needs of the people. And they will keep resorting back to you. They will keep resorting back to you. Praise the name of the Lord. What are the biblical wisdom keys? for business breakthrough. In the first service, we looked at some of these keys. We just quickly run through them and then add some little more. We said, number one, give yourself to spiritual growth and development. God will not give you any business bigger than your spiritual capacity or your spiritual stamina can handle. Or else, the business will overwhelm you. So give yourself to spiritual growth and development. Unfortunately, many people run so much, put all manners of energy for swing businesses. They don't have time for spiritual things. That's why you don't go beyond that particular point. Because God has seen you are spiritually dry. If he opens that door, if in any way he gives you that breakthrough in that business, the kind of arrows, the kind of challenges that come, you don't have the spiritual stamina. And so he wants you to live long. He leaves you at that level until you build up stamina. Anytime you want to step up in business, step up spiritually. Step up your spiritual life. And then you see God pushing you up. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So step up spiritually. 
and then you see your business stepping up. Psalm 1 and verses 1 to 3. Watch the people where you, where you are found, the people you work with. Watch those you associate with. If you don't associate with godly people, <laughs> it will not only crumble your business, it will crumble your, your, own, your spiritual life. So watch where you are found. Because where you are found is what determines what finds you. Be found in spiritual environments. And you discover everything about you will just keep going up. Number two, seek for the advancement of God's kingdom. Seek for the advancement of God's kingdom. That business connects it to God's kingdom. Let it be a part of promoting God's kingdom. What investment is your business involved in? In the house of God. Hallelujah. When you put your business online, in promoting the kingdom of God, that business will never go down. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 3 to 5. As long as Zechariah, I mean, as long as Uzziah sought God in the days of Zechariah, he prospered. When you keep seeking after the kingdom of God, that business will keep prospering. Second Chronicles 26, 3 to 5. Hallelujah. And number 3, connect to the covenant of Titan. Titan. Anyone that does not tithe has given room for the devourer. Connect to the covenant of Titan. Titan, personal Titan of the blessings of God upon your life and corporate Titan for your businesses. Because your business is an entity. You are an entity. So you don't pay your personal tithe and say, think it has covered your business. No. That's why your business was registered under a name. Register under a name. If you offend somebody now, he can't go and sue your business. You are an entity. Your business is an entity. The same way, if you pay your own personal tithe, you are shielded, but your business is open. He will protect you. He will, he will stop the hands of the devourer from touching you, but your business is open. In insurance, if you have three vehicles, you bought them in the same name. Is your name. But they are different vehicles. They are either insured separately. You pay premium for each one of them separately, or you put it under fleet. And they calculate the premium, which covers everything. They calculate it depending on the qualities of the vehicle and capacities of the vehicle. But you pay premium for each one of them. For the insurance to cover it. So that when anything happens, if you don't pay the premium, anything happens, nobody will indemnify you. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's how it is. Your business is different from your, you as a person. And so, we pay tight, personal tight, we pay corporate tight, the business tight, so that that business will be secured and covered. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 11. When you do that, God opens the window of heaven and shuts the hands of the devourer over you. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 30. And number 4, we said, biblical wisdom for business breakthrough, number 4, Live a lifestyle of thanksgiving and joy. Live a lifestyle of thanksgiving and joy. Be grateful to God. Where you are today is not your bus stop. God has greater height for you in business. But thank him for where you are today. If you do not appreciate where you are today, you can't get to where you want to get to. So thank him for where you are today. Consciously appreciate him. Praise the name of the Lord. Consciously appreciate him. Thank him. Don't let no devil tell you, oh, what are you thanking him for, for this small thing? Jesus took five loaves and two fishes. Father, I thank you. I thank you. And then it multiplied. When you complain, you complicate issues in your life. When you grumble, you become crumble. Live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Thank him for where you are. Thank him for life. Thank him for even placing a business in your hands. Hallelujah. Thank him. A lifestyle of thanksgiving and joy. John chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. 
when he blessed the five loaves and two fishes, they multiplied. Numbers 11 and verse 1, when you murmur, you provoke him. He said, because they murmur, the anger of God was killed and fire came down and burned them. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Live a lifestyle of joy. First Corinthians 10, 10. Live a lifestyle of joy. If you don't want that business to dry up, in Joel chapter 1 and verses 11 and 12, he says, the feed perished. The harvest perished. Why? Because joy was out of the lives of the people. The vine is dried up. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. When that business, if God catches you, keep frowning, keep complaining, keep complaining, things just keep going down. The harvest is realized in an atmosphere of joy. The doors open with an atmosphere of joy. Challenges are part of life. The challenges that come to you as a believer, oppositions that come to you as a believer, they are not to submerge you. No, they are to lift you up. Just like I will always say that opposition is for your up position. So when you see challenge, just rejoice and celebrate God because your position is about to change. In that business, everyone passes through one challenge or the other. But they knew the God they were serving. They overcame. Whatever challenge you are passing through in that business now, it will turn to you for a testimony. Did I hear louder? Amen. And number five, you, you want that business to prosper, connect to priestly blessings. Connect to priestly blessings. Isaiah 44 and verse 22 is the one that confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers. Isaiah 44 and verse 22. He confirms the words of his servant and performs the counsel of his massive messengers. So every word of blessing from the mouth of your priest is important towards the prosperity of that business. Hallelujah. Prosperity of that business. And that's what will be released unto you today. There is an unction of blessing upon this commission. That's why anything we embark on, it prospers. Anything we step on, it prospers because God's hand is upon this commission. God's hand is upon the apostle of this commission. And down the line, down the line, he has delegated that blessing to men to pronounce such blessings and God watches to perform it. I stand as one of such accredited sons of the prophet and I prophesy to that business. I decree a supernatural turnaround in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they have mocked you concerning that business, they are coming to celebrate you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is going to be released upon you today that will open up your destiny. Prophets are for preservation. In Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, prophets are for preservation. He has sent them for the preservation of man. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. By a prophet. I stand with that prophetic unction upon the apostle of this commission. And I decree every dying business, I pronounce life in the name of Jesus. Every staggering business, I command speed in the name of Jesus. Every crawling business, I decree speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What more? Some additional keys that will help your business, you know, break through this month. Hallelujah. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Because your mentality determines your identity. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Stop carrying a failure mentality. By the time you enter into a place, oh, it can't work. That business you are in, you already concluded it cannot work. How can it work? In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are what you think. The result you get is a function of what you think. Proverbs 23 and verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't think failure in that business. Don't think smallness in that business. Hallelujah. Think greatness. Think greatness. Think greatness. Think breakthrough. Think breakthrough. Don't let the devil point your eyes to the situation today. That is just temporary. Hallelujah. 
Situations are circumstances are temporary. The God behind you is, is constant. Think breakthrough. Think greatness. Hallelujah. So carry a breakthrough mentality. Because your mentality is your limitation. Your greatest limitation is your mentality. Your greatest limitation is your mentality. Think greatness. That, that challenge cannot subdue that business. No. When you win inside, the doors must open outside. I once told you the story of the fish in the aquarium. The owner put a sliding glass to divide the aquarium into two because the fish was small. And the fish started growing and growing. And as the fish swim around that aquarium, moves in and gets to where that barrier is, that glass is, he will hit it with his head and turn. And that has been the lifestyle of the fish. He will swim and hit his and move back. He will swim and hit that place and move back. Until when the fish overgrow that small space. And the owner just remove that sliding glass. And then the fish has the whole space to swim. But funny enough, the owner of the aquarium stood one day and was watching the activity of the fish. The fish will swim. And get to that very point where the glass was. And swim and do like this and go back. And come again and swim and do like this and go back. And then when he watched and watched, at the point when the fish got to that barrier, the owner pushed it to the other side. And the fish realized it was empty. There was no physical barrier. All along, he had that mental barrier where there was no physical barrier. So it is your mental system that determines what you see. The major barrier is mental barrier. If the mental barrier is broken, every other barrier will be broken, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. So see breakthrough in that business. See greatness in that business. And then you will have it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two, start from where you are. Many people are waiting for big things. Start from where you are. You may have a great dream, but start small. Every great dream started small. The reason why many people are stagnated in business today, they have great ideas, but they want to start very big. You ask him, so why have you not started? I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for funds. How much do you need? I just need maybe five million, maybe three million, just to, to start something so that <laughs> this stuff money is not what you need. It is the idea you need. Just start somewhere. Start small. I've given you the testimony of somebody who started selling Akara from where it ended up supermarket with vehicles. Start somewhere. Start now. That 5,000 in your hand, start it. Start something now. That 10,000 in your hand, start something now. Oh, I have great idea. I don't have capital. I don't have money to start. What capital are you looking for? All those fridge, freezers, all those things in your hand, what are they doing? You are drinking cold water and your life is still hot. Go and sell those freezer and plug it into one's business. Start selling something. Start selling something. And tomorrow you will buy chains of freezer. Even if you want to put freezer inside toilet, you will buy and put it inside toilet. Know what you need now. Instead of going about to borrow, borrow, borrow money, borrow money for the business you have not started. Sell what you have. And start that business, and tomorrow it will buy greater things. You have three vehicles, and you don't have business. You don't have money for business. And you are driving three vehicles. Even to fuel the vehicle is a problem. And then you have great idea. Sell one of them. If possible, sell two. And start that business. Tomorrow you buy a better car, a better model. Praise the name of the Lord. Start from where you are. God told Abraham, look from where you are. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 14. Look from where you are. Look from where thou art. Not look at where you are. Look from where. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Look, after the Lord was separated from me, lift up now your eyes and look from, look from. He didn't say look at. Looking at your places, looking at your situation, looking at the situation there and shaking your, your head. Look from and push ahead. Look at what you have at that position and stretch out. You don't have business. You want to live big. 
Okay, you are very comfortable with what thank God for your life. But along the line, you have some little challenges here and that. Adjust! How can you be going to borrow money to want to maintain your status? Who are you deceiving? Calm down, my friend. And start from there and begin to go up. Those who jump up, they come down. But those who grow up, they stay up. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how it is. You had a flourishing business and saw someone along the line is not moving the way you want to move and then you want to jack up that business. You are living in a rented house. A big house. You are paying heavily. Your business is not doing well. You are borrowing to go and pay house rent. And then your business is suffering. You are struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. struggling. You want to enjoy the comfort of house. At the expense of your business, change where you are living. Go to look for a smaller house. Get change from whatever it is and plug it into your business. And tomorrow, from that business, you will build your own house. Praise the name of the Lord. Start from where you are. Hallelujah. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Though thy beginning may be small. For those who, are, who have despised the days of small things, for they shall rejoice. And shall see the plumo in the land of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth, who have despised the days of small things. Don't despise that small thing in your hand. Because that thing has potential to take you around the world. Invest into it today. And it will generate great dividends. Hallelujah. Number three, integrity. You want to prosper. And maintain and keep prospering in business. Maintain integrity. In Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall preserve him. Shall guide him. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. The integrity of the righteous. Integrity. In, you are in business. What you trade in business is name. When you lose your integrity in business, you have lost it. Integrity makes you suffer gain without pain. So keep your integrity. In Psalm 92 and verse 12, he says, For the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon, the righteous. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the path of the just man is like a shining light that shined more and more unto a perfect day. The path of the just man, the path of the righteous, integrity. Let me warn. Let me warn. For those who engage in dubious business, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. God does not prosper unrighteousness. Even when it looks as if the devil is giving you some beat, it's a trap. It doesn't take one day to destroy. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Do righteous business and God will prosper you. Don't join them in this world of 419. Don't join them in this world of Yahoo Yahoo. The end is way of destruction. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is a way of destruction. Somebody's life ending. Somebody who has labored for 35 years and saved and saved his pension and whatever thing he has gathered and saved for 35 years that he has worked and labored in his, you know, age where he should sit down and enjoy. You now do for one and swap the account of that person. You are sweat causes that may affect generations to come. Watch out! God does not promote unrighteousness. It may look as if you are thriving, but it does not take more than one day. One sickness can hit a man that can sweep over his enemy. All the ones he has used. Check those who engage in dubious businesses. What have they achieved? They build houses they can't live inside. 
there was there is an estate in Abuja. As we pass there each time, that estate. The story is that after building it, nobody can stay there. The first people that attempt to stay there, they in the night they had all manners of wood. So they ran away. It's still empty up to today. Blood money, evil money. The little that the righteous has is better than the bread of sorrow. May the Lord give you understanding. May the Lord give you understanding. May God help you. Anyone that is involved in an unrighteous business, receive grace to make a U-turn in the name of Jesus. There are greater ideas that God can give you that can boost you up and announce you to your generation. Hallelujah. Number four, the diligence. You want business breakthrough? Don't be a lazy person. Be diligent. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. See, as a man who is diligent in his business, he shall not stand before me men, but before kings. Be diligent. Look for something to do. Don't be a lazy person. Be, be diligent. Everyone you see that God is blessing today, they started somewhere. They started somewhere. They started from where? There's no wrong for people to help you, but don't make yourself a beggar. Service has not ended. You are patrolling all the vehicles there. Any good vehicles you see, you fetch them. It's my year of supernatural turnaround. They give you. You go there. You collect. You, is that the kind of money you use to build your house? That's not the kind of prosperity we are talking about. Hallelujah. Don't live your life as a collector. Strive to be a distributor. Praise the name of the Lord. Be diligent. You see on the road, you see hefty men with two hands, two legs, and he's begging you for money. He's begging you for lazy. Who told you that there is no job? There may not be job, but there is work. They are constructing everywhere. Go and look for where to carry block and earn a living. When you carry blood, your senses will turn around and be correct. One, one heavy idea will come to your head. And then your testimony will be sweet tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord instead of begging. Some people are just lazy. They can't do, they don't want to do nothing. Can you drive? Go and look for somebody who needs a driver. He said, Pastor, the problem is that my eye cannot see far. What can you do? Go and carry block. Eh... I forgot carry block. But anytime where I carry block for this my head, my head go they do co, 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 co. Okay, then your stomach go do ke, 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 ke. Go and look for how to learn how to sew so that you can be sewing and at least that we can be keeping you. Ah, the problem is eh, my hand they shake to put thread inside needle. Praise your name. Lazy man. Lazy man. God is against laziness. He said, he that does not walk, let him not eat. Look for something doing. And then from that smallness, God will increase it to greatness. Hallelujah. Number five, discipline. You want to prosper in business? Be disciplined. Some people are working, but they are not disciplined. Everything they are earning, they are eating to their mouth. They don't even have record. You're a businessman. You don't have record. You don't know whether you are making losses or gain. You don't. You come to your shop. You call them. All those your best. Give me this in there. You are selling soft drink. Give me everything. Give me. Give me Sprite. They say, Madam, you know cold. Wait in cold. You say, Coke. Which one? Okay, bring Coke and Mott. And then, lack of discipline. You use money to buy what you don't need to impress people. Because you see one of your, your, your friends in church just wear one new dress. I like this stuff. How much? This one, this one, this one. Hey. Nephew, bring for me. And the money that you're supposed to, for investment, you used to buy that one. That's how some people, they can't see what they are working for because they are not disciplined. I speak by the power of God. Every spirit of a discipline inside of you dies today in the name of Jesus. That business is designed for greatness. And as the Lord leave it, it shall be an attraction. Very soon that business will take you out of this country. It will take you around. Enlargement on every side. People will begin to look for you. It looks 
as if it's in the corner. God will bring it to the upper. That business will prosper in the name of Jesus. Well, what more? Today we are taking the communion. The communion injects unto us divine nature. The nature of Jesus. He was a man full of wisdom. With mighty works. The wisdom of God shall be infused unto every one of us today. And then great ideas, creativity will bellow up on you. And then that business will open up in a new dimension. The satanic obstacle that is responsible for the crawling of that business, for, the, for it's responsible for the failure of that business. Now, I inject life in the name of Jesus. From today, this business shall receive speed, supernatural favor, financial favor. Wherever your money is held down anywhere, paralyzing that, trying to paralyze that business, I command it is released unto you in the name of Jesus. I command supernatural open doors for that business. Favor for that business. In the name of Jesus, the Isaac order of breakthrough becomes your portion in that business from now. In the name of Jesus, wherever that business is tied down, it is loose right now in the name of Jesus. I decree that business blast in the name of Jesus. Prosper in the name of Jesus. No more breakdown in that business anymore. In the name of Jesus. From today, begin to receive greater open doors in the name of Jesus. No evil for anyone this week. No loss for anyone this week. No evil report for anyone this week. Only open doors. Only good news in the name of Jesus. The God of our fathers goes with you. The God of Bishop Edeco goes with you. You will not be stranded this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, a year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth.